So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the implementations of the join all and the completable futures custom collector, which are what's used in this program to allow all the asynchronous computations to run in the background and then return a single completable future that's triggered when all the asynchronous computations finish. So if you go watch the earlier part of the video, you'll see how these things get created. So if you go look here, we see there's a couple of different helper classes in the utils directory. And let's go ahead and take a look at the stream utils join all method first. And join all creates a completable future that completes, that when it completes, will have converted all the completed completable futures into a list of results. And so what's happening here is we're passing in a list of completable futures. And we got that list of completable futures, if you recall, over here in the join all method or test join all method. We got the list of completable futures there after starting all these things to run asynchronously. And now we're going to join them all. And this is a very clever little helper function. And what it does is it uses the all of arbitrary arity method that's defined in completable future. And all of takes an array of completable futures and it returns a single completable future that will trigger only when all of the other completable futures that were passed as the array parameter have finished their processing asynchronously. So you can kind of think it if you're familiar at all with the concept of wait for multiple objects in Windows or select and poll in Unix, it's kind of along those lines, just working with asynchronous computations with, with completable futures. One of the little quirky things about the all of method, actually two little quirky things with the all of method. One, you have to pass it in an array and you very rarely have an array. You usually have a list of things. I don't know why they don't have a list version of this. So you have to convert your list into an array, which is a little syntactically odd. And then the second thing, you'll notice that the completable future that comes back from completable future all of loses the type information. It's a completable future to void. And so you have to keep track of any type information outside of the call to the all of method on completable future. And, and that's just something else that we have to encapsulate. So here's how we encapsulate it. We use a completion stage method called then apply, which is going to be chained on to the all done method here, or sorry, the all done uh, local variable. And by the way, I could have chained this together. I just did this to make it easier to document. So we say after all done returns, then let's have a completion stage method, method such that when all the other completable futures in this particular array have finished running, then apply this action. And this is a function that will take the list of completable futures and turn it into a stream of completable futures. We then go ahead and use the map intermediate operation to join each of the completable futures to objects of type T to be a stream of objects of type T that have completed. And we always know that this call to join will never block because we wouldn't get to this point if all done hadn't triggered the then apply completion stage method. So the join call here will never block. And then the final thing we do here is we collect the results in that stream of elements of type T into a list of elements of type T. And that is what gets returned back to the caller. So as you can see here, we end up with a list of these completable futures as a result of calling, I'm sorry, we get a list of items of type T, which in our case are big integers. And that's what comes back from the call to join all. So that's, that's what join all does. The problem with that is it's still a little bit um, unintegrated into the broader streams paradigm. So to address that problem, we're going to make a collector, a custom collector called futures collector that will abstract away all these details and allow us to be able to seamlessly integrate completable futures into Java streams. So let's take a look at how this works. So the futures collector implements the collector interface and it passes in completable future of type T for the elements in the stream. Those are the, the types, the type T. We then define the 
basically the uh, next thing is the accumulator, which is going to be the type of the mutable result container, which in this case will be a collection of completable futures to type T. We could put list here too, um, but it's, we say collection. And then the final thing we do is we, we have the return value that comes out of this, or R, and that will be a completable future to a list of elements of type T. That's what we want the finisher method to transform into. So here's the actual implementation. You can see that we start off by having the supplier factor method return a constructor reference for the array list object. So array list colon colon new, that's a constructor reference. It comes back as a supplier that will make an array list when the framework needs to make the accumulator. Then we go ahead and put in the accumulator method, which is a factor method that returns a by consumer that will take an object in the stream and apply it to the mutable result container, which in this case will add the result to the collection. Then down here, we have the combiner, which we don't use here, but would be used if we had a parallel stream. And the combiner will go ahead and take one collection of completable futures of type T and another collection of completable futures of type T. And then during the reduction phase, it'll add another to the end of one and return one. So it basically is concatenating them or combining them. And then the final method, which is really the most interesting one, is the finisher method. And the finisher method is going to essentially take the mutable result container, which is this futures array list. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the contents of that array list, convert it into an array. And then it's going to go ahead and call the all of method. And the all of method, as we saw before in the context of join all, is going to return a single completable future that will be triggered when everything else finishes. And you'll see that this time I actually chain things together using the fluent interface pattern. And so we get back a single completable future, which is triggered when all these completable futures are done. And what we do in that case is, is almost identical to what we had done earlier when we were doing the implementation of join all. We convert the list into a stream, basically map all the completable futures to type T in a stream to a stream of items of type T without blocking. And the final thing we do is we collect the results into a list of type T. So that comes back as a completable future to a list of type T. And that's what gets used over here. We end up with a completable future to a list of, in this case, big integers. And then all we have to do is just join on that at the end. So a couple other things in futures collector, just real quick, um, down here, we, uh, we basically set, we take a um, characteristics set and we don't care if they're ordered or not. And then we have a factor method called to future that returns a future collector. And that's what actually gets called over here to pass into the collect method. So that's the end of that overview, showing in more detail how collectors are implemented and showing how you can wait for things or you can basically be triggered when a bunch of completable futures finish.